it's quite an interesting story how this castle came about. It starts back with a fellow um, that I had done a lot of drywall work for years ago. He actually called me one day and asked me if I would build him a house in Kenwood and carry all the financing. And first I thought, that's kind of strange, but I did it. And he paid all that money off too, and he made money. Then he called me one day and said, I have this beautiful piece of property in Kenwood. I'd love to be my partner with me. Would you come, let's design a beautiful house and build it and we'll split the money. So we came over and looked at this property and it was beautiful. And I thought, wow, I just, I just could feel this feeling like I belonged working on this. And so I immediately started designing a house. And I started waking it up in the middle of the night thinking about the design of this house. And I thought, oh, I couldn't sleep. And so I'd start sketching stuff down. And pretty soon I had a pretty good floor plan and some elevation. So I took it and I stuck it up on the ceiling over my bed. And I'd fall asleep at night thinking about it and looking at it. And I'd wake up with all these thoughts. And at that time, I'd never been to Europe. I hadn't seen any Norm castles in Normandy. I hadn't, and I hadn't read any books. It was all dreaming in my head. In building this, I wanted to make the castle something that everybody throughout the world could really enjoy. I wanted it to stand out and be seen, but I didn't want it to be like a sore thumb. So I started paying attention to the environment and the trees and the mountains and everything around here. So when I wanted the brick on the outside, I looked up at Hood Mountain, which is the big mountain behind us here. And uh, if you look at the colors of those mountains, if you're standing down at the highway or out in front, you look back at the colors of mountains and you look at the castle with the brick, you'll see it's the same colors. And there's over two million bricks in this building. I try to bring the outside and the inside together. So you'll see in the outside brickwork, you'll see arches and stuff. And so when you look at the fireplaces, you'll see arches. In the doorways, you see arches over the bars and stuff. And so really what I think adds character to a building is to bring the inside out and the outside in, marry the two together. Now the castle is actually 16,000 square feet on four different floors. It, it was quite a, quite a feat in construction. Our family's been in the wine business, you know, from the Cunningham side from back to 1860. If you go back to the history books of Sonoma County, the Cunningham's made 8,000 gallons of Zinfandel in all county. And I've always had a passion for it. I've always really loved it, not just to drink the wine, but just understanding how, how does it get to be where it is? How, how do you make a fine wine? If I'm building a building, I have to have good materials. They have to be well-designed materials. And so if I'm making a fine wine, I need to have good fruit. You can't make good wine without good fruit. My feeling is that 90% of the quality of wine is in the vineyard. It starts with the soil matching with the climate, with the rootstock, with the clones, the spacing of the rows. It, believe it or not, all those things will change the grape, which change the wine drastically. We really pride ourselves in, in every year trying to make the wine as good as the year before and hopefully better every year. And, and way, one way to judge that is to have other people judge your wines. I mean, it's, it's easy for yourself to say, oh, this is a great wine, but to send a wine out to Robert Parker or, to, or the Wine Spectator, or, or there's numerous places that you can have your wine judge. And to get other people to say over and over and over again that this wine is in the mid-90s or in the 90s or it's a gold medal or it's best to show, best to class, it, it tells you, it gives you an idea, not just what you think of your wine, but what the public thinks of your wine. My family, especially my mom, who was Italian, there was always food involved. And being raised on a ranch where everybody, you know, at lunchtime we would we'd drink wine all with our meal. I felt like it was a really necessary component of the business to really show what my family did, is to have a gourmet marketplace. And we even take that so far that at a lot of our club parties that we have here, we use recipes that my mom used to serve over and over again. I think it's a great draw to the building where you can come and sit in these beautiful picnic grounds. Our family wants to give more of a, of a total experience about wine. To be able to have an intimate conversation with you and, and tell you about the vineyard, the winemaking philosophy that we have here, and, and why you're tasting what you're tasting in the glass. And to do that, to really have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, you need to spread your crowd out and have nine different tasting rooms so you can actually 
talk to one of my assistant winemakers or a wine consultant and find out about the wine. We actually have uh, about eight different clubs. We have the Castle Club, which is like two bottles of wine every other month. We have the Knights Club, which is two bottles every month. We have the Nobility Club, which is a case of wine twice a year. And then we have the Royalty Club, which is a case of wine four times a year. And then all those clubs, if you're friends with a winemaker, you get all reserves, all the you know, high-end wines that I make, maybe 50 or 60 cases of, 100 cases of, all the really hand-picked, specialty stuff that I'm playing around with all the time in the cellar. Our family started talking about having a foundation that the money went directly to kids. So what we've done with our foundation is we have asked kids to write in to our foundation and say, why do you personally need the money? How do I get people to, to put money into the foundation? I get people to believe in that. And so I went to Michael McDonald. He was one of the first persons that I worked with to help me raise money. And Michael and I made a wine together and we sold that wine during that day of the concert and then sold it after that for the next six months or so, I'd say. And all the funds that we raised from that all went to children. And then Jeff came up several times and signed bottles and we had a, a, a nice event here where everybody got to meet Jeff and shake his hand. And we had a, a huge event here at the castle. It was a huge turnout of people for Dwight. And he personally shook almost every person's hand. He had his picture taken with everybody, he signed all these bottles. He came here. It was, just, it was so successful that we were selling the wine almost faster than we could get it signed. And he must have made six or seven trips here just to sign the the bottles for people and meet people. Again, it raised, you know, close to half a million dollars of money and again, just giving it all to kids. Well, I've really worked hard in my life making sure that when somebody comes here, I give them the same quality and hospitality of service that I would expect myself.